Welcome back. Uh, this is part three on uh, making coil pot with the air dry clay. And I'm excited. The sun shining and feel great. It's warmer. Enjoy some fine coffee. A little hazelnut. Oh, that's good. Um, actually, I'm not really feeling that that great. I. I, uh, I feel like I've deceived you a little bit, and so I've missed some teacher teaching moments, and uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, I came out yesterday, remember I made the coil pot, and, uh, and I told you I was going to add some more clay, but what, what happened was I... Uh, I didn't cover it very well, and so it was pretty warm yesterday afternoon, and it got dried out, and uh, here's some clay I left out, and it's rock hard now, so don't throw this away. You can wet this down and, and recycle it, but it's a lot of work. So. so I was supposed to shoot another part of the video yesterday to show you how to go further with the coil pot but it was a mess it was a hot mess it was uh, dried out it was hard it was out of shape and what did I do I kind of wanted to hide that from you and uh, that's just dumb we all make mistakes um, even people like me that have been doing this a long time so uh, I should have shown you how I saved it and uh, but anyway I'll go over that but the other thing, too, I, I showed the yesterday's video to my wife, and remember I had mentioned that my brothers uh, were jerks and had been abusive and and showed that to my wife, and she said, you know, she knows my three brothers, and she said, they weren't, they aren't really all that bad, are they? Come on. So, I, you know, I shouldn't have called them jerks and abusive, you know, that was inappropriate. And just to be fair, um, I did some things to them as well. So one of one story, uh, my brother John, who's just a, about a year older than I am, um, he had shut a door on me and it had a nail sticking out and it hit me in the head. And, and of course, my mom, you could have put his eye out with that, you know, how all that goes. But so being a clever little four-year-old, uh, decided I would get even with my brother. And so I'll use this... Uh, piece of clay to illustrate. So I went in the backyard and I created a, uh, don't do this at home, don't do this to your brothers or sisters, but so I uh, created a uh, teeter-totter and uh, with a plank of wood, piece of old uh, wood fencing, and took a rather large uh, heavy boulder and put it on one side of the plank with another uh, log that the board, this like a little teeter-totter. And I told my brother to get over here on a chair and then to jump from the chair to the board. And what do we get? Boom. Rock hits him right in the head. Blood's pouring out. Of course, I'm excited. Perfect plan. The result was what I was looking for. He goes in the house screaming, crying, Mom, Mom, Mom. My mom wraps it with a white cotton cloth, red blood spots coming out. She puts a feather in it. He thinks he's a, a warrior chieftain. And he's running around acting like, like he's uh, conquered the world, you know. So it wasn't the effect I was looking for. But that was the wrong thing to do, wasn't it? So my brothers aren't jerks, and plus they might see the some of these videos they may google their name on youtube sometime <laughs> and see them so bros sorry man didn't mean it we're all bad okay at one time or another but let's practice being kind to each other okay so enough of that uh, let's get back to this coil pot and uh, let me just make sure it's in the shot here okay 
So we, uh, I'm going to uncover it. And again, remember I told you I lost, thought I had really lost the piece. And actually it's in pretty good shape right now. But so what I did was I, I took some water. This is pretty moist right now, so I'm not, but I sprayed water, completely soaked it down good, put it back in the bag tight. And then once it softened up, I was able to, uh, to reshape it. Some, there were some cracks in there. I was able to close those up. And I had completely lost the form. And so now the, the form's pretty much back to the silhouette here of our template. Okay, so we're now about halfway up the wall. So on this piece, we'll write about here on it. So now we're going to start to make that turn inwards. And uh, so we're up about here. And as you can see, we're, we're going to want to turn in now. So I'm going to take some clay and uh, so what I have is a bunch of loose clay that um, I was working with yesterday. Again, like I told you, this can be water added to this and softened up again. Matter of fact, I'll put some of this back in the bag. Don't throw any of your clay away. Remember the video we watched uh, from Maria Martinez, the respect for the earth and and uh, so let's respect the material that's being provided to us and uh, and make the most of it. Use, use all of it. Okay, so if you have a piece like this, let's go ahead and there's a hard piece. So don't, don't add that in there. But take the softer material. If it's a little dry, go ahead and add some water to it. So this is really making the most use out of your clay, recycling it, stretching it out. So let's work that. Let's get all these molecules smashed back together again. We want to get that clay and moisture content evened out throughout the Add a little more water, and uh, don't use too much water. But and then I'm going to wedge it with the heels of my hand, push away from myself, bring back, push away from myself, roll back. If it still feels a little dry, add some more water. Now it's, it's warmer these days now, so sometimes you have to keep adding a little bit of water. Okay. What did I say about keeping your tools clean? I'm going to listen to myself. Okay, let's keep that clean. That's a roll, right? We got rolls. Okay, so let me this into coil and I'm going to twist it a little bit like a cinnamon roll man <laughs> a little rowdy here We're going to roll it out about half inch, remember? Wet your table down a little bit. If you need to, wet the piece. As you can see, my clay must have been pretty dry, so you got to add some water. Good use of your water sprayer. Okay, so 
this is still pretty moist around the edge, remember, because I wet down the whole piece. So if it wasn't, what we would do again is score. Let me show you that again. We would score the edge, crisscross hatch marks, and add some of the, the slip to it. All right, but we don't need to in this case because this is very damp still because I moistened it yesterday. So now on this, what I wanted to show you was Remember on the first four rows, I put the clay directly on top of the ledge there. Now I'm going to go in a little bit, so slightly inwards, because we're going to start to taper inwards. So instead of being squared up on the edge, I'm going to move it in slightly, okay? Because now we want to change the direction a little bit, or start to change it. So. As you can see, I'm putting the clay more inside the piece a little bit. Remember, take that and cut a 45 there. Remove this. And remove this little segment and join that back up. Okay, so you have a nice little joint there. Okay, now we're going to, see if you can see here, we're going to work the inside just like we've been doing all along. Push, mush it down there. I'm trying to think of the right words. Smush, schmoozle. If you can come up with your own words. So get that joined up nicely really an important step here. Now the same on the outside. Just be gentle with this, don't distort the form. Just gingerly hold this in your hands while you're working. You can see I'm closing up this seam. Remember how Maria Martinez worked on her pieces? It's very similar. I learned a lot from her watching her work on the videos. But okay. So now I'm going to, again, we're now going to, this is pretty thick. We want to get a little height, so we pinch and pull up, but I'm trying to pull in a little bit because I don't want it to go outwards. So pinch and pull up just like our pinch pulls. This is really just a continuation of that technique. Okay. Let's check our template again. Okay, we're moving along. Might have to come out you can see there's a little gap there. So we need to keep pulling this out a little bit, pushing it out. But before I shape that some, I'll go ahead and add another coil. If it gets dry, add a little moisture. We want to try to keep this fairly round. About a half inch thick. <clears throat> and uh, let's add another coil again. More on the inside than of the ledge than the outside. Because once we pinch it up, it tends to want to move out. And so we want to, we're trying to change the direction somewhat now to go up and in. Okay, so again, join the inside.
and then uh, we'll join the outside. Close up that seam. Smush it together. Join these molecules together to become one strong single unit instead of separate units. So that's the thing with these corals. They start, once they're joined together, they really add strength to this finished piece. Okay, and again, now we're going to pinch it up, but keep it going a little bit inwards. See, I'm holding the outside of the pot so it doesn't push out. Gently and check the walls to make sure we have making use of all that clay and it feels fairly even. Your hands will start to get educated on the thickness of the clay and so when you squeeze a piece of clay you'll start to sense that okay that's the thickness I want that wall to be about a quarter of an inch okay so feel that and train your fingertips there's a lot of nerve endings here that send messages to our brain that that it's amazing how smart our nerve system is and our intelligence okay so I'm working out any thick spots okay now the thing we can do now is we take this paddle Use this to shape the piece. Don't try to alter this too much because we've already got that where we want it. Again, we can also take the, the now clean rib tool. There may be a test at one point and I want you to remember these words. You might want to write that one down, rib tool. Another word we talk about is wet work. This is wet work, the clay is wet. If it were dry, but still had moisture in it, it would be leather hard. And then if the water was pretty much evaporated, it's bone dry. A lot of planes flying overhead today in the Monterey Airport. I don't know if there's a golf tournament coming up. Or... Okay, a little lopsided. Let's check our... You can see from our silhouette here that I'm off quite a bit. You see the big gap there? So I'm going to take that, push that. I know this actually appears to be going in quite a bit, so I can take my hands. This clay is still very moldable. And stretch that out a bit because it's somewhat collapsed there. Oh, and you see a little crack there. That's where that got pretty dry. And we can work that clay around that crack and close that up again. And just stand back and look at the form. Remember we're going for something like this. Use that template, keep checking. See, I'm closer now, so. But use that template, push that clay out to meet that silhouette. And then when we return, for the next segment, 
we're going to go even higher and get closer to a finish. Okay, so add at least two more coils. We're getting it up. It's about oh, six inches high now. We're going to get another probably four inches. So that concludes our segment part three of the coil pot and be kind.